course, looking ahead, Thanksgiving is now just three days away. And joining me in studio is Dr. Corey Gonzalez, a local clinical psychologist, because we wanted to get his expertise on handling anxiety around the holidays. There are so many stressful situations that come with even happy holidays, right, Dr. Corey? There can be. Good afternoon. Good, afternoon. Good to be here. And I want to say yeah. happy birthday to my wife, Jamie, real quick. Oh, so, happy yeah. birthday, Jamie. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. So a holiday birthday for her. Many families getting together, whether it's birthdays, the holidays themselves, Thanksgiving coming up the soonest, obviously. What do we do when we have those tense family relationships and you're trying to get together around a big meal? Well, Lane, it's really important that we're all prepared mm -hmm. for these situations. Be flexible, yeah. be fit, and kind of prepared. We don't want to be unresolved or primitive or raw. Mm -hmm. And we have to have some insight. If we have any buttons or loose ends with people, being around people that you may have had some fallings out or, or there's political strife or anything like that, we really want to get ourselves together. Yeah. So we get to the family dinner table, we're pretty refined. So it's important to be insightful to what your buttons are, how you're wired, and also protective measures. If you get upset, mm -hmm. how to handle yourself, what you're gonna do, what you're going to say, and, and you know, sometimes people even make up acronyms. Okay. You know, they get anxious, they'll come up with a term. I always like when there's turmoil, stress, HER, H-E-R, humility, empathy, and reliability. So okay. have some tools ready psychologically. Okay, and one of those can be just, hey, I'm going to take a step outside real quick, right? Just removing yourself respectfully from the situation. Yeah, if you get yeah. triggered, if you have a moment, you want to be able to restore yourself and know what your protective measures are mm -hmm. to take care of yourself. But a lot of people are traveling this time yes. of year, too. And to take, you know, if you're going to be traveling, prepare yourself for delays, mm -hmm. meditate before you go, bring some music, bring snacks, battery chargers, whatever it may be, yeah. and really try to enjoy the process and give yourself plenty of time. And if you've had a lost loved one at the table, you know, someone's missing this year, make sure and acknowledge that. If you have younger people that are socially anxious, yeah. you know, maybe try to, you know, plug them in somewhere, have them sit next to someone they're comfortable with, give them a task, something to do so they're not anxious. Yeah. And if you're hosting these things, really have attainable goals, Elena. You want to make sure that you delegate, designate people to help out with things. Mm -hmm. um, keep your RSVP, you know, thing kind of firm so you're not overwhelmed. Um, and if someone else is alone, you might want to reach out to them. Yes. You know, if you know someone's lost a loved one, try to get them connected during this time of year. It's really important. So. And I think even if someone has lost a loved one a long time ago, we lost my dad eight years ago this time of year, I still check on my mom every day and especially around the holidays. Is there ever a time that you can start backing off? Do you just leave it to the person who's grieving to kind of guide you? Yeah, I, I think it goes case by case, but I think it's always important to recognize it. It gets, I think, easier, but per particularly the first year yeah. that someone's missing here, to have some kind of toast or a prayer you know, some kind of ritual to acknowledge, because I'm a real big believer, Elena, when you acknowledge these things, mm -hmm. you may be tearful, you may be emotional on the front end, but you eventually get the other side of this thing, yeah. and you end up sharing good stories, warm stories, and laughing. So I think it does get easier over time, but it's important to still acknowledge someone here is missing and to have a little ritual for that. Perfect. And I love that we're making mental health a more candid conversation. Does somebody need to have diagnosed anxiety to feel anxiety on a holiday? Not really. I mean, you know, yeah. it, there's people that have been around, you know, coming back to your, your family can bring up old stuff. A lot yeah. of people want to avoid having those feelings, how they felt as a child, or I never want to feel that way again, or perhaps they're around people that may have abused them in yeah. some situations. So it, you don't necessarily have to have a mental illness to get triggered, but you do need to know what these things bring up for you. Try to have emotional intelligence and be insightful to what these things bring up. Yeah. Identify your protective measures and let somebody know that you love. Hey, if I get triggered, let me walk away. Try to stay away from political conversations. Try not to be overly virtuous. Right. Try not to say, I need to educate you. You yes. know, these things are kind of, you know, <laughs> ignite things. But, you know, be understanding and look at the commonalities. We're family. We come together once a year. This will soon be over. And there's good and bad and everything. If you're alone this year, remember, it's not always blissful when you're a family. Enjoy wherever you're at. And if you're alone by yourself, you know, sometimes maybe stream a movie yeah. or, you know, read a book. You don't necessarily have to get online and have the fear of missing out thing, right? The FOMO. Right. So many so, of us have that. Yeah. So yeah. In, embrace wherever you're at in life. That's a really, happiness is not a destination. It's how you travel in life. It's how you travel in so life. So really see the good and wherever you're at and be present. And don't indulge in too much food or alcohol. That was my thing, too. What about somebody who's trying to diet, whether for health or for personal reasons, or, or maybe somebody who's recovering from alcohol abuse, and suddenly there's wine everywhere yes. on the table? What do you do? Well, you got to be prepared. And you, maybe if you're an alcoholic in recovery, you know, kind of have your sponsor's name ready, on, you know, undialed okay. if you need it. Um, also, bring your own beverages. Yeah. And tell somebody there that you're, you know, what you're trying to do as far as your sobriety and recovery. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you know, strict diet, you know, uh, nutrition stuff, 
fill your plate up with vegetables, fruits, yes. turkey, and try to stay away from the mashed potatoes and the gravy <laughs> and the rolls and all that stuff. But if you do end up overindulging, remember tomorrow is a new day. Yes. And just as one day a year, you know, be easy on yourself. The real important thing about this holiday is have gratitude. Yeah. And be grateful for what you have, not what you don't have. Yeah. And try to be present. So, and if you create, two, you have two high standards or two high goals, you're not going to enjoy what you have. See things for what you have, not what you want them to be. I love that. Yeah. Very good tips. Yeah. Dr. Corey, this was fantastic. I hope we helped a lot of people today. I hope so too, Elaine.